Hello once again, everybody. We are at the Molly Karen Agricultural Center, just north of London. At the Farm Science Review site, I'm visiting with Farm Science Review Manager Nick Sackrich. Nick, it's always good to talk with you and catch up on what's ha going to be happening at the review. And my gosh, it's coming up fast and not too far down the future, September 18th, 19th, and 20th. We are at a site right now that everybody would recognize from years past but won't recognize probably this year. This is where the, the vice president's luncheon is always held. There's usually a big tent here. What happened? Yep, so uh, we, we outgrew the site basically for where that, that tent needs to be. So we've relocated that tent to accommodate more space and just be a little bit easier on logistics on our end for a lot of reasons uh, with the event staff that sets that up. So what we've decided to do here with that opportunity of space is uh, we'd like to expand our educational presentation. You know, we're, we're very focused on corn and soybeans because it's major crops in Ohio, but uh, we also get a lot of visitors that are in the livestock industry, which we have a lot of exhibitors that are in the beef industry and other parts of the livestock. But um, as far as education goes, it's, it's a place that we can improve on and provide more resources to our visitors. Now, does that mean that some of the uh, exhibit areas that had livestock in the past, are they all going to be coming here? Uh, that's a good question, Gary, but this is just educational in nature pretty much. So all the exhibitors that are in livestock, um, they're going to be in their, their same homes as they always have. Uh, just fortunately for us with the, uh, the request to have educational space for livestock and the placement of this lot, it's right adjacent to where most of the livestock exhibitors are. We don't have, you know, uh, dedicated spaces for different types of the, or different parts of the industry, but just naturally uh, a lot of the folks having livestock equipment wanted to be close to the breeding associations and just naturally a lot of uh, exhibitors kind of migrate to the same area and this, this is in that place. Oh my gosh, as far as education goes, you can get so much more education done in this large space than ever before. Yeah, so so we have a 100 by 100 space we're going to utilize, and uh, this year is just going to kickstart it and get it going, and over the next several years, we look forward to making it into something that's a must-see for all our visitors in the, in the livestock industry. The, the beef team at OSU Extension is going to get it started for us this year and have some things with cattle handling. Uh, beef quality assurance is, is something that's big in the media right now, and uh, there'll be some information about that at this site, uh, a lot of different uh, you know, places that you can get resources for that for BQA throughout the rest of this year, and OSU Extension wants to share those. Well, as far as uh, folks coming out normally to uh, look at livestock and, and uh, see some of the quality uh, beef and dairy in the state, uh, that's something that uh, you're, you're saying that is still going to be there. And uh, my gosh, you're very close to where all that's happening. That's, that's right. Uh, you know, most of the beef exhibitors are just to the south and the dairy exhibitors are just to the north. So it's right in between. Um, you know, we'd, we'd love to see some more presence from the other uh, species out there, too. And I think in the future that's going to happen. But, you know, just to get it started, the beef team is going to be rolling and um, have a few things here for education. And it, I think it's going to develop into something great for our show. Oh, it's everything that I like about the Farm Science Review. Put something new in and give it a chance to grow. That's right. And we always like, you know, like to tell people, you know, give it three years to give it a chance to see how it goes. Because the first year it's just getting started. The second year people are starting to find it. And then by year three, you know if it's going to be a success or not. Okay. And now let's talk a little bit about uh, the big tent that's usually here. Where is that being moved to? Yep, so uh, right next to our uh, shuttle load up for field demonstrations is where that big tent will be. So if those of you uh, are interested where that, that uh, event lunch uh, is going to be for uh, a lot of different reasons, um, that's the location now. So it's a little bit easier to get to for those folks that have uh, some, some mobility needs and assistance, and I, I think it's going to be great. And another piece of that, too, is uh, you know with, with mobility and, and uh, cleanliness, we're always talking about how to make the visitor experience a little bit better. And most people are familiar with going to porta potties at a show. And that's something that you don't typically advertise for yourselves. But you know we have these trailers now. These in, the industry has switched to some trailers that are much nicer. And uh, the consensus from a lot of people is it's, they're nicer than your bathrooms at home in most cases. So um, we're excited to have some of those to improve the experience and not just have porta potties, but we have these, these mobile trailers that are going to be very nice. So look for those trailers. You may not recognize them as restrooms but that's a need that everybody has when they come to a show and as far as uh, the congestion uh, you're putting all that uh, in one area so the congestion shouldn't be as bad and likewise where the tent used to be uh, on the day of the vice president's luncheon there was a lot of people a lot of vips coming in from all over and uh, you rectify that congestion as well 
Yeah, that's right. And it's great to have traffic in front of your booth if you're an exhibitor. But uh, when they're when they're coming to a lunch and uh, just standing in front of the booth and it's hard to talk to visitors, there's a lot of cases in, in a philosophy of a show to uh, be able to have activity going on all the time. But at the same time, you know, the lunch isn't going on all day long and uh, it's not every day either. So at other times it, there's not a lot of activity there. So it kind of goes both ways. You got a lot of activity uh, during the lunch and, and around the lunch. But then uh, when it's not going on, there's less activity. So this will bring more activity inside this space right here and it'll be good for all the exhibitors around and then also the educational piece to it as well. And Nick, we also all always like to talk about how easy it is to get to the review site. Yeah, so we're really along I-70. So there's two exits that are really easy to get to, one right in the middle that can get a little bit congested. We recommend you use the, the State Route 56 exit if you're coming from the west and the State Route 29 if you're coming from the east. And um, if you need to you know, find the gas station, 42 is great, but it's very congested every year. So we recommend the other two, get on to 40 and, and come right in. And, and we've, we've uh, made a few little changes, but nothing that the visitors will, will experience other than getting into the parking lot a little bit quicker, hopefully this year. And um, you know, with the large crowd, um, that's a good thing to have traffic problems, but as the, the more we can tweak it and make it better, the easier it is to get in and out and the more time you can enjoy at Farm Science Review. Very good. A few tips for the 2018 Farm Science Review, which is going to be held September 18th, 19th, and 20th. Nick Zachrich has been our guest. Thanks, Nick, for being with us. Great. Thank you, Gary. And stay with us back with more right after this. Don't forget to check out our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and check out our website at inohiocountry.com. Allen Davis Insurance Agency in Wapakoneta and Minster is your solutions provider. You can trust the experienced professionals at Allen Davis Insurance to protect your assets. Call today and start saving money with multi-policy discounts and more for auto, home, life, business, recreational, total farm protection and more. Call Allen Davis Insurance Agency in Wapakoneta and Minster. We are your solutions provider. Call 1-800-686-2148. A strong community contains a lot of moving parts, good jobs, a healthy economy, and maybe most importantly, pride. At POET, we are proud to be doing our part, creating new local jobs and spurring economic development while producing products that improve lives around the globe. Together, we're not just working to serve our community, but to change the world. And that's something we can all be proud of. See the world differently with POET. Hello once again, everybody. It's a great day just north of London, Ohio. We're on the grounds of the Molly Karen Agricultural Center. I'm visiting with the superintendent of the center here, Matt Sullivan. Matt, you couldn't ask for a better day. Let's hope we get three of them in September. I tell you what, Gary, when you have low humidity and 75 degree temperatures and a little bit of breeze, that's Farm Science Review weather. Well, every year there's something new, and we're standing in something new right now. There are a few of our uh, little furry friends behind us. You know, um, we have installed 15 beehives here to incorporate all the different educational type opportunities we have here at the Gwynn Conservation Area. And these hives are part of a new prairie project that we're doing here at the Mo Molly Karen Ag Center, Gwynn Conservation Area. You know, this is a, a, a hidden treasure. I think some people come to the Farm Science Review and uh, maybe for a couple of reasons. Maybe they want to see everything in the exhibit area and they run out of time and don't make it over here. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, today highlights some of the great things that you can see on the Gwynn Center. You know, one of the things about the Gwynn is it's easy to get to from the review. You just hop on the shuttles at the west end of the exhibit area and then at the first stop, you get off and you can experience all the neat things here. You know, we talked about the beehives. We've talked about 10 acres of prairie and all the different types of flowers that'll be blooming during review. And then we have a lot of landowner practices, such as um, different types of grasses you can put in your acreage, whether if you're not growing corn, soybeans, but you have five acres a lot, you can use those type of grasses there. And then we also have um, different types of trees here. We have pawpaw trees. We have oak trees. We have um, trees that you can learn about um, what type of wood you want to raise for your next generation. And of course the birds of the air, Bluebirds, uh, has a special project out here. We have partnered with a 4-H group here in Madison County and one of the neat things about it over the, over the t 15 years I've been here, but it's been about the last 10 years, we have a seen a resurgence of bluebirds, which is pretty exciting. 
because you don't get to see those everywhere around your homes and things. But if you come to the Gwyn, you can see all of our bluebird boxes and them flying around. And it's a pretty neat thing to look at. And of course, when you have a, a, a facility like this, you can do a lot of educating. And during the Farm Science Review, there are tents set up and uh, OSU educators are uh, under the tents. And there's a, a myriad of, of uh, every day of the three days, different subjects that people can come and learn a little bit more about. Right. Overall, during the Farm Science Review and the Gwyn Conservation Area, we have over 170 educational sessions, everything from gardening to home improvement, to farming, to conservation. And so there's, if you come to the Gwyn during those three days, there's probably gonna be about 30 to 40 presentations. Everything from soil pits, to trees, to fish. If it deals with conservation, it's here at the Gwyn Conservation Area. And on a day like today, as we were driving back through the prairie area, we saw a lot of the, the flowers, the wildflowers in, in, the, in the prairie that attracts, uh, well, birds, bees, and, and uh, other little insects. All that helps the farmer make sure that the crops will grow at the end of the year. That's right. You know, we, we get concerned about the bees because we, we need those for all the different fruits and vegetables. But as we look at the prairies, you know, one of the things we need to look at is the natural pollinators because we depend on the natural pollinators as much as we depend on the bees. And so the prairies like this will allow us to um, increase that population of those pollinators and being able just to have a, a wide variety of flowers and crops and things for us to enjoy. And uh, there are a couple of ponds out here to... Uh... I guess just sort of well makes everything look pretty nice, but you do some uh, education with them as well. Right, so the folks in Extension that deal with pond management, they're gonna be out here talking about what are the best ways to work with your pond? You know, you see a lot of ponds that may have some scum or some plants growing in them. They'll teach you how to keep your pond looking nice so that you can stalk it with the correct fish and then enjoy fishing with your family. And you have a couple of uh, permanent structures at the Gwyn as well. Right. We have a cabin, and that cabin is a, a year-long year cabin that people can use for educational type events. But there will also be displays and educational type of um, programming going on in the cabin. So if you need a little bit of air conditioning during the Gwyn Conservation Area, during your tour, you can just walk in and sit down and enjoy an educational session with a little bit of, a little bit of HVAC. Well, and, and the other educational displays under the tents uh, from the OSU educators, uh, bales of straw there for uh, being able to rest those legs that have been walking in the exhibit area. We always have plenty of seating at all the different educational settings. So it, it's always good to rest your legs a little bit during the review because it's a lot of walking, but it's well worth it to get those nuggets of information from OSU Extension. And again, it's very easy to get here from the exhibit area. That's right. Just hop on a shuttle from the west end, and the shuttles run constantly from about 9 a.m. to 4 o'clock or so. And so you, you'll never have to wait in line for a shuttle. We have plenty for you. Okay, our guest has been Matt Sullivan. Matt, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Gary. And make sure when you come to the 2018 Farm Science Review that happens on September 18th, 19th, and 20th, that you make your way to the Gwen area because, well, you don't want to miss it. That's right. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Closed captioning paid for in part by the following. Are you looking to buy or sell farmland? Then work with a company that works for you. Ron Spencer Real Estate. Founded in 1975, Ron Spencer specializes in farmland, agricultural, and commercial real estate. Check them out on the web with three locations to serve you. Ron Spencer Real Estate at rsre.com. That's rsre.com. SNS Volvo is your locally owned heavy duty truck dealership in the area with a full line of Volvo and Isuzu trucks. We offer Volvo, Isuzu, Cummings, and GM parts and service weekdays until midnight until 4 30 p.m. on Saturdays. We also have leasing and rental options to meet your needs. We have the expertise to get and keep you on the road. Stop by at 2600 St. John's Road or visit us at ssvolvo.com to see our wide selection of new and used truck inventory. United Equity Inc. is your locally owned farm-based cooperative. 
for agronomic services, we offer seed and a full line of dry and liquid fertilizer, as well as soil sampling by soil type, grid, or management zone to best utilize your fertilizer application. Call us to discuss agronomic services customized for you. Reach your best yields with United Equity, serving Allen, Augley's, Mercer, Putnam, and Van Wert counties. Visit us on the web at unitedequityinc.com. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of In Ohio Country Today from the presidential grounds of Rutherford B. Hayes here in Fremont, Ohio. We're with Holly Stacy from the Chamber of Commerce of Sandusky County. Holly, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Tell us a little bit about uh, Fremont, Ohio and beautiful Sandusky. And, of course, the uh, former president of the United States, Rutherford B. Hayes' uh, museum and uh, family uh, mansion here. Exactly. Uh, lots of exciting things here. Um, you are sitting or standing in the heart, um, the, in the county seat of Sandusky County in Fremont, Ohio. And we are very fortunate to have here in Sandusky County the um, beautiful mansion of, of Rutherford B. Hayes, the 19th president of the United States of America, and a library museum um, here on the grounds as well that is used by folks from all over the country who do their research on genealogy or any types of research using this facility. And then you can take tours um, of the mansion as well as these beautiful grounds are open year-round uh, for people to do walking. It's as beautiful in the winter as it is in the summertime, but just to, to walk and enjoy, to exercise, ride their bikes through, or uh, walk their pets. Ohio, the Buckeye State, of course, is well known for its contribution to uh, our presidency uh, here in the United States, and uh, Rutherford B. Hayes Museum and, and the grounds here are just a beautiful stop, but that's just one of many things uh, here in Sandusky County. Of course, we're an agricultural program, so we always want to talk about ag-related uh, businesses, and tell us some of the featured businesses uh, that are ag-related here in Sandusky County, Holly. Well, agriculture is our number one industry um, in here in Sandusky County, and we've got, uh, I, I can't give you the number of farms off the top of my head, remember what that is, how many actual um, working farms that we have, but a variety of things. We've got a unique variety of soils. So what brings that, uh, what brings the uniqueness to what we have in the agriculture industry here comes from just that, from having that diversity of the soil types that we have. So we've got vegetable crop production. We've got our small grains, fruits, um, the orchards that are uh, here. We're in that just, just south of one lake county. Um, so we've got that region off the lake that is a nice effect when it comes to concerns of frost and those kinds of uh, things for our fruit crops and productions that we have. And then there's just the whole spinoff of the industry types and just the pure geographical location that we are um, to the masses of populations of the country um, here in Ohio. So when we look at all that, we've got a variety of things. Um, we have the Heinz plant. It's the largest, the second largest uh, ketchup manufacturing facility uh, right here located in Fremont. And then we've got, of course, all kinds of the spinoffs off of that. We've got our local co-ops, um, agribusiness from anything from the seed to chemical sales um, that are lo located here as well. Um, we have a commodity pack. The Fremont Company produces snowflake sauerkraut, Mississippi barbecue sauce that you're familiar with possibly. Yeah. Those are here. Um, our neighbors directly uh, to our West, the Herzl Canning Company, um, under the name De Fratelli. Um, a lot of our producers in Cross Sandusky County produce uh, commodities for the production of their tomato-based products that they produce. So there is a variety of things. A lot of popcorn grown in this area oh, yeah. as well, along with all you know, like I said, the fruit and the orchards um, that come come in with it. So we've we've got agriculture year round. You know, Holly, one of the things that I think is very exciting for the chamber to do, especially your chamber, is to feature those agricultural products as a gift pack, if you will, that uh, visitors can uh, purchase uh, at your offices downtown. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, we have what we call the Ag Pack. Um, <laughs> it's an agricultural commodity pack, and it says homegrown values on the box, designed by one of our very own proud members, Green Bay Packaging, here in Fremont. And they provide the boxes for us. And inside that, we feature commodities that are either the raw materials and or the actual final product is manufactured, produced, processed right here in Sandusky County. So we have seven different commodities uh, products in that in that pack, and it makes for a great gift. Um, people want a little taste of home. They're from Sandusky County, but maybe not here now. Uh, a lot of them are used for gifts. When they're having somebody, visitors come in, uh, they want to take something back um, that they want to take back from Sandusky County. There's something very usable in there. We've got Heinz products in there. We've got the defertility labels in there, um, the snow floss with the, with the kraut. Um, Wellies barbecue sauce. We have a great facility um, 
Roots Poultry here in Sandusky County. And we can't put chicken in there um, because they don't do a canned product, uh, but we have uh, a seasoning sauce. And that's a spinoff company of that, of that family business is the Wellie Seasoning Sauce. Holly, we love Sandusky County. We, we love everything about it. It's a great agricultural county, and it has some wonderful places to visit. Uh, obviously, the Rutherford B. Hayes uh, Museum and Family Mansion. If uh, people want more information, where should they go? If they want to get more information on Sandusky County, um, there's a couple of different uh, locations. You can hit the Chamber website, which is um, SC for Sandusky County, then the word chamber.org, or sanduskycounty.org will get you to the, either the county site and as well the Convention and Visitors Bureau that we have as an organization here that continues to promote and organize the special tours and things like that for people who want to come and, and visit the county. Holly Stacy, President, CEO, Chamber of Commerce, Sandusky County. Holly, thank you so very much for joining us today. Thank you, and welcome to Sandusky County. <laughs> and we'll be back with more in Ohio Country today right after this. Allen Davis Insurance Agency in Wapakoneta and Minster is your solutions provider. You can trust the experienced professionals at Allen Davis Insurance to protect your assets. Call today and start saving money with multi-policy discounts and more for auto, home, life, business, recreational, total farm protection and more. Call Allen Davis Insurance Agency in Wapakoneta and Minster. We are your solutions provider. Call 1-800-686-2148. SNS Volvo is your locally owned heavy duty truck dealership in the area with a full line of Volvo and Isuzu trucks. We offer Volvo, Isuzu, Cummings, and GM parts and service weekdays until midnight until 4 30 p.m. on Saturdays. We also have leasing and rental options to meet your needs. We have the expertise to get and keep you on the road. Stop by at 2600 St. John's Road or visit us at ssvolvo.com to see our wide selection of new and used truck inventory. United Equity Inc. is your locally owned farm-based cooperative. For agronomic services, we offer seed and a full line of dry and liquid fertilizer, as well as soil sampling by soil type, grid, or management zone to best utilize your fertilizer application. Call us to discuss agronomic services customized for you. Reach your best yields with United Equity. Serving Allen, Augley's, Mercer, Putnam, and Van Wert counties. Visit us on the web at unitedequityinc.com. I'm visiting with the president of the Ohio Soybean Association, Tommy Price. Tommy, first of all, tell us a little bit about your operation back in Putnam County. Well, hi, Gary. Oh, I farm with my brother in Putnam County. Uh, we farm, we're a family farm. I, I live and I work on the ground that my father's and my grandfather's, my great-grandfather's bled and sweat on, actually, so we're connected. And uh, we just raised corn and beans. Uh, we're out of the livestock now for a few years, but uh, it's farming's a great life. Okay, and, and you've been involved uh, locally uh, as a, in addition to what you've been involved with uh, statewide with the, uh, the soy uh, the Soybean Association here in the Buckeye State. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of the issues that uh, you're concerned with here with the association. I know that uh, GMO labeling has been a, uh, an issue that has been ever present on the minds of membership. Okay, the, G the GMO labeling issue is one that's really near and dear to us and it's making a uniform law clear across the land instead of having one state dictate what all the other states are going to you know have to have to label stuff and we GMO is an important is an important technology you know so we can feed the world and we need that we really we really do need that and uh, we would like to make sure that this uh, labeling isn't you know, like a skull and crossbones kind of thing where it's it's a yeah, we want to be labeled but not warning you know farmers are absolutely in favor of people knowing what, the, what they're eating. They should, they, if someone wants to know it, they should. You know, there are uh, farmer members in uh, almost every county in Ohio, and uh, very, they're very good about going out to organizations. I know that if any of our viewers now are watching and, and uh, would like a little bit more information about that, all they need to do is probably contact the uh, state office, and, and they can line up some farmers locally. And you guys are always uh, eager to go out and inform the public, mostly the non-farm public. Yeah, the Soybean Association has districts, and there's farmers in, in every district that sit on the board, and we have access to a lot of, uh, you know, the staff. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if we don't know an answer, we can find an answer and then bring it. 
over half of what we grow gets shipped overseas, you know, to feed the world, to feed, you know, to feed animals. And, and it, it's important. It's an important market. Agriculture is the biggest, the biggest industry in the state, and the soybean is, the, is our largest cash crop. Well, you have a visual when, when you discuss that, how much is exported uh, from Ohio as you're driving down the road. Yeah, some, some people say it's like every other road. I like to think when you're going down, the, when you're driving down the road, the field on the right stays here and the field on the left goes for, goes for others, feed the rest of the world. The Soybean Association was started 50 years ago, so this is our 50th anniversary. And uh, I guess I was only 13 years old at the time, and, pe and there wasn't a lot of soybeans being raised in the state, but now it's our largest crash crop. And, and those with a pad and pencil can take that 13 plus 50 and, and figure that one out. <laughs> That's exactly. <laughs> well, let me ask you a, a final question. How has uh, not only the association, but uh, uh, farming uh, soybeans in the Buckeye State changed over the years that you've been involved? Oh, well, since I've been involved, I used to have to hoe beans by hand and <laughs> replant, work the ground. And then it was rotary hoe and it was cultivate and you lived with the crop all the time. And now... With the technology, we can farm a lot more. Uh, we no-till all of our, my brother and I no-till everything, you know, that keeps the soil on the land, keeps it out of the, out of the rivers and out of the lakes. So, uh, yeah, farming has changed a lot. And I can attest to, to that, hoeing the, the weeds out of the beans. I, I remember doing that on our small farm in Hardin County many moons ago. See, I don't add, add the, the numbers or do anything like that. Tommy Price has been our guest with the Ohio Soybean Association. Tommy, always a pleasure. Thanks for being with well, us. Well, thank you, Gary. And stay with us back with more right after this. Allen Davis Insurance Agency in Wapakoneta and Minster is your solutions provider. You can trust the experienced professionals at Allen Davis Insurance to protect your assets. Call today and start saving money with multi-policy discounts and more for auto, home, life, business, recreational, total farm protection and more. Call Allen Davis Insurance Agency in Wapakoneta and Minster. We are your solutions provider. Call 1-800-686-2148. Don't forget to check out our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and check out our website at inohiocountry.com.